She came from people that lived on rock, 40-acre rock farms, who went down to the beaches in the cold North Sea and got the seaweed and carried it up year after year, generation after generation, building up the soil so that they could raise dairy farms. They were 40-acre dairy farms that had a lot of kids on it. And uh, now my mother's options were, I'm going to marry somebody with land. Most likely they, would, uh, they weren't going to inherit it in any, anything. So they married somebody with land, become a nun, or migrate. And they were cold, hard realities. Even, uh, I mean, uh, even the Texas Panhandle, I mean, it was like Catholic College, St. Benedict's, hell, it's 500 mile drive. <laughs> you know? And then, and then you're you're out of the Texas Panhandle. You're out of the Oklahoma Panhandle. You're out of the Kansas Panhandle. You're in, damn, you're in Atchison, Kansas, almost at, at the Mississippi River, the Missouri, the big no, then the big Missouri go down to, yeah, and going up there. I was a very interesting experience going to school in Hatches in Kansas. My brothers, my brothers go on to Mar Hill. Did, I met your mother. My brother met, met your mother and married your mother. And I, a lot of my friends from around the, and they were from everywhere. And so that's what I talk about. And, and the same thing on an ethnicity thing. I thought, well, I'm from Ireland, and family from Ireland, well, hell, hell they're, they're migrants. They're all leave, leaving, going to work, trying to, and what, what, what is, what is all the people on, all the local, the native Hawaiians? Well, they're basically come from South China through the archipelagos, they're Polynesians, that can, populations are there, they have a, they're documenting the maritime history and stuff like that, and they're great canoe artists, and they came, so, and they migrated, and they ran into the Europeans, and well, well you know, they, they, they deserve a life, they, they, and you say, well, we were here before they were here, and well, Hey, we're all, we're all immigrants and migrants going around to try to find our place in the world and stuff like that. And it just wasn't a lot of options. And she chose to migrate. And when they migrate there, they have a party. They have a going away party that they call a living wake. And they say goodbye to her and she gets on the boat and she's going to New York City, 1929, the Depression, and she's probably not going to come back. She did go back once, I think, in her, uh, when she was in her 60s, but, uh, and my mother did not want her children to know the poverty that she faced. And she experienced the Great Famine and the impact of the famine and on Ireland, which was unbelievable. It was an unbelievable level of poverty that existed in there. I mean, the, the English repressed the Catholic population imposed its will on it, 
like it has on a lot of countries, India and uh, Middle East, and uh, uh, that's that's. But they the one thing that the British did, they gave in, they they imposed the English language on the Irish, so that when they came to the U.S., they were prepared to work, participate in politics, and et cetera, because they understood English, and that was big. The bilingual language of, 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 of English, of knowing English, and they, they basically knew Gaelic, but it just wasn't a, a language that was going to be economically viable uh, in supporting them. They needed to know English, and they came with that, and it, uh, that was big. And the Catholic Church was very helpful in uh, upward mobility and uh, academics and et cetera. And uh, that heritage I uh, was brought to the Amarillo area, and I benefited tremendously by it.